Hey everyone, what is up? Welcome back to another episode of Win Tuition. I'm CJ and today we're bringing you something really special. Something we've never done before. We're bringing you a sneak peek to the deck list I'm going to be piloting during our Pride Month episode where we take two commanders and partner them together and battle it out for supremacy. Uh, so the cool thing about this video is the deck list is incomplete. I do have over 106 cards in the list, but I want your help to help me finish this deck. Uh, we want your support as well. So let me know in the comments anything that you think deserves to be in the list, deserves to be cut. I do ask things throughout the video as well, so make sure you guys keep your ears open for that. At this time, I want to thank our sponsor of the channel, TOA or TOA Magic as they're known. They're the purple booth at Magic Cons and SCG Cons across the U.S. TOA, thank you for your support. We really appreciate you. And if you're in the market for singles or seal product, you can also help support this channel by going to toamagic.com and using our affiliate code at checkout, WINTUITION, to save some money on those magic cards or seal product you're looking for. And with over 77,000 SKUs, I'm sure they're going to have something on their website you're looking for. And they ship all in one package straight to you and offer free track shipping on all orders. And I will say just a heads up, this is a totally off the cuff episode. So without further ado, let's get in today's sneak peek. All right, guys, so this is the deck that I've been cooking up. Uh, so this is what we have. Uh, so Gods of Wheels. So as you know, I am a Heliod player. I've played it on the channel several times. And one thing I've had problems with is kind of closing out the game, right? You have all of the power. You have all this card advantage. You know, you're discounting your spells very, very quickly with, you know, just one wheel effect. And... I wanted to add red. I felt like red was a really good color that would go very well with this commander. You gain access to the red wheels. You gain access to damage. Spells like that. So I actually considered going for more of a X spells and being able to reduce like uh, some high cost damage spells and kind of copying it a bunch of times. But I just didn't like it. So I went with this list. And again, not complete yet. I want your input on this list for the final revisions. Um, as you know, viewers of the channel and supporting us, we want your input. So we have Heliod, the Radiant Dawn. And really what's cool about this one is it's the backside that we care about the most. Because again, it gives us our cost reduction for each card our opponent's drawn this turn. And then we have our finisher, the Locust God. So what's really cool about these two kind of synergizing together, the play pattern is very, I would say very linear, right? So the goal is to get our Heliod out first and get him flipped. So that's seven mana, which is already a lot of mana and we want to protect him. And then once we get some cost reduction down from our opponent's drawing cards, whether it be off their Rhystics, uh, their Archivists, you know, their One Rings, once we get into low enough count, just to four, we can then cast our other commander for two. A blue and a red, which is really nice because then it'll set up, you know, the potential to go off on someone else's turn. And what's, again, really cool about these is, is, let's just say best case scenario, our opponent on the turn before us, in C order before us, tries to go off. We go off on top of him. And let's say we can't get, you know, a win just through, you know, non-creature spells interactions. And they go to pass the turn. Well... Even though we failed with, you know, trying to go off with non-creature spells like a blind obedience or whatnot, uh, or another line we'll discuss here in a little bit, we'll have a board of locusts ready to swing for lethal the following turn. So it's it's is a really sweet list. I'm really enjoying it. I cannot wait to showcase it on the channel. So let's get right into the list. So obviously, I'm gonna also just say that look, just a heads up. I'm gonna kind of go over cards that I include in. A Heliod list, and I'm gonna go kind of go over cards that are you know mainly for a Locust God list, and then I'm gonna kind of tell you how they kind of synergize together um, in some cases. So, starting off, we have for Planeswalkers, we just have Teferi, um, just a solid silence effect or abolisher effect, if you will, uh, to help us secure our win on either our turn or during our opponent's turns. Um, moving on to creatures, so I'm running 12. I have Kitten in here because it is a combo with Teferi. It allows us to draw our deck and create all those Locusts. So even if we lose access to our 
main commander, which is Heliod, we could just win through a Locust God being on the field with a Teferi and Kitten as well, which is pretty sweet. Um, Dockside, I mean, we're playing red. We have to have access to red. And I will say what's really nice is you're going to see here in a little bit where I'm not running a lot of the larger artifacts such as Chromatic Ori, Go to Lotus that regenerate a lot of mana because we have access to things like Dockside in our list now, which is really clean and lowers our curve a lot. Running Esper, Fairy Mastermind, just more draw engines as well. We have the Hallbreaker Horror as a good finisher with Blind Obedience generating infinite mana and extorting the table for game. Then we have Imperial Recruiter, and I, I am really excited to use this card because it can fetch up a lot of key pieces for us. So it can fetch up our kitten, it can fetch up Dockside, it can fetch up, you know, if we wanted to, an Esper Sentinel or a Thimage, uh, a Metamorph. It can even fetch up some protection like Spell Skite. Um, because, you know, Bow Mash is our Kryptonite and our commanders cost so much, we I wanted to keep protection in the deck still to kind of feel a little more safe when it comes to having those commanders out, you know, out in the open and just, they're just a hard target for removal. So I kept it in the list as well, because that is a specific to Heliod list because Logos God just comes back from the graveyard at the end of turn. So, which is a really cool effect as well. But the Imperial Recruiter can get a win condition for us, which is Sage of the Falls. So, What's really cool about this is it's a five cost card, which is pretty high when you're just playing the Locust God. You know, it's a very top end finisher, but when we have Wheeliod out and we have a discount, it usually just costs one generic blue. So for one red, one blue, we can go infinite, which is really sweet because the card reads, whenever Sage of the Falls or another non-human creature enters the battlefield under your control, you loot. You may draw a card if you do discard a card. So we're able to churn through our deck and find whatever we need at any given time um, to whether it be interaction, a wheel, and we can stop whenever because it is, it is a May ability, which is even better. So it's just so strong. And we got the Ranger Captain again, a excellent silence effect when trying to go off on our opponent's turn or even on our own turn. And then Ragavan, one of the, it's just my, one of my favorite red cards. Um, just such good value in the early game, being able to get just a generic treasure ramp and potentially a, you know, a zero cost rock off one of our opponent's decks or even a tutor. It's just so good. All right, moving on to the sorceries now. Um, we have 11 and again, I'm at 106 cards. So obviously as I go through this, um, you know, keep track of anything you might want, you think I should cut, or maybe I'm missing. So we are on a, a heavy wheels package. Uh, so we have Days Undoing, Echo of Eons, Time Twister, Wheel of Fortune, Windfall, Winds of Change. So six right off the bat there, and I think I have one more. So seven total in the deck um, with Valakut's Awakening as well. It's more of a self wheel. It's not, you know, a wheel effect for everyone, but I consider it a personal wheel. Um, Gamble, which I think I might cut. I, I'm i not, I'm on the fence right now, guys, if I should keep Breach, the Breach line in. Uh, I just feel like it's not necessarily needed uh, because, you know, we're a wheels deck. We're not really keeping cards in our yard sometimes for very long. Um, now we can, you know, go for the Breach line where we either go Brain Freeze or Wheel of Fortune to fill our graveyard and draw a bunch of cards, but I just feel like it, I don't know if it's needed. So let me know what you think on that. Ah, oh, Mind's Desire. As some of you may know, this card is one of my favorite cards in Heliod because it can just do so much at any given time. You know, you can see from our last video uh, with their Quark deck, it was one of the it created one of the biggest stacks ever. It was it was sweet. Um, Miss Valorian, just a good uh, you know removal spell, uh, soft removal if you will, and then also it can also double as a kind of a ritual for us. It, it's able to Return all of our zero cost, uh, one or two cost rocks to our hand, and then replay them and just get more mana to generate that we need if we're trying to go off. Uh, Rite of Flame, just a good little burst of mana to get a Dockside out, Ragavan, or even play like a Wheel of a Winds of Change and a Wheel of Fortune at the same time. Um, or if you know we pay one red, cast the wheel, and then get into a Winds of Change, do it again. Just seems really good. Um, and then Seagate, Seagate's just so good again. We want to we got. 
also want to just be drawing ourselves as well at, at certain points in the game. So being able to, you know, draw 14, draw 20, and then, you know, make 20 one one locusts just seems so good to include. And again, with that cost reduction, it's only going to cost us three blue. So pretty low investment. Moving on to instance, I'm instance. I'm pretty high on interaction. I have 24 uh, good. I, I would say a handful of its removal and counter magic. Um, mainly counter magic again for the you know protecting our commanders, uh, protecting our cards specifically. There are a few cards in here that are specific to our commanders, if you will. So even the score is just a good generic card in Heliod. Uh, because it's just a draw X spell, you're never really paying the triple blue investment, which it's just gas when you have both out because you're not only drawing that many cards, but making that many 1-1 one, one locusts. So just straight gas. Um, Soul Partition is again another card that is unique to Heliod uh, because it is very versatile. So a lot of times when I play this card, I'm either hitting something of my own or I'm hitting a Bowmaster's. Because there are times where I can remove like a Machine God's Effigy, which is a four cost artifact that has an ETB and enters as a copy, so it's a clone. So I can get like another Dockside, I could get um, just something really useful, like or, or just a Bowmaster and, and kill another Bowmaster on the stack. Because again, Bowmaster is the Kryptonite. So for one white, I can, you know, and that if as long as I have that cost reduction requirement met, I can just cast it for free at instant speed, which is very, very flexible and uh, just, you know, versatile uh, overall. And we just have cards like Brandic Search to give me some draw, uh, some small increments of draw as well, and to reset my land count. Again, I had Valkit's Awakening. It is a self-wheel, but, you know, best case scenario, we've just drawn 20 cards with Seagate. And we want to get rid of a bunch of the lands that we just got off that. So we can just Valkit's Awakening, draw more card, get more fuel. Um, it just seems really good. And then our counter package, pretty straightforward. We got Offer, SWAT, if some people, you know, if you want to count that as a counter spell, I, I do. Uh, Dispel, Fierce, Fluster, Force, uh, of Negation, Force of Will, uh, Mental Misstep, Mind Break Trap, Pact, Pyroblast, Swan Song. Pretty, maybe could cut one or two pieces of counter magic in my opinion. We are pretty on the high, high side. And then March and what was the other one? A braid. So those are more pieces just for versatile removal. Um, for example, bone again, I'm not going to preach enough. Bow masters is the kryptonite to this deck. If it is on the field, we cannot really do anything. Um, so being able to, you know, for, essentially for one red mana, either kill a bow masters or kill a problematic artifact. Uh, if we're going up against a, a different matchup that, you know, is on an artifact synergy, like, you know, hint, hint, winter orb. It's just a little, little hint for uh, the video. Um, you know, we can pop it. So um, I'm not big on snap. It is very good in the sense it can, it can bounce our dock side if needed. And then, you know, untap two lands. I get one extra, I get, you know, let's say we're on, we're on a, a, let's say um we're cooking and we're you know we're going off we're popping off on someone else's turn you know it's only one mana for the snap to return a dock side and then we you know net a mana and then use the other mana to play the dock side and make more treasures but like i'm always in fear of a swat like just bouncing our wheelie out off the stack and it's just like then we're kind of like well you got you got me Swords is also just another way to remove something off the board. Like, again, Bowmasters. <laughs> so that's pretty much, again, 24, I feel like, seems high. I could probably cut one or two here. Um, I don't know if it's worth cutting Intuition. Because if we if we don't run Breach, I think running Intuition is fine. It's still kind of fine. Because we could just get three wheels. And then they give us, you know... Most likely, if we go grab Echo of Eons, Days Undoing, and Time Twister, we can flash back the day, or the Echo of Eons, and then just you know, it doesn't really matter what they give us at that point. So it just it just feels still fairly decent, even though you know we're not really on the breach lines. So I don't know, hot take I guess. 
Moving on to artifacts, we're on 20, so, you know, a little high, high end as well. We want a lot of mana for this deck for sure. Um, one card that I did still include, even though it has a very high casting cost, but it synergizes both very well with both of these commanders, is Coveted Jewel. Uh, not only does it allow us to draw three cards, it also creates three 1-1s one for us. So, and what's really cool about this is it does pair very well with Kitten, because you can just kind of keep playing non-creature spells, flickering the, the Coveted Jewel with Kitten, and then drawing more cards, making more Locusts, and just kind of looping that as well, which is pretty strong. Then you obviously have your basic Mana Rock Package, your Fast Mana, Arcane Signet, Chrome Mox, Felwar Stone, Grim Monolith, Jeweled Lotus, Mox Opal, Mox Diamond, Mana Vault, Mana Crypt, Lotus Petal, Soul Ring. I'm running both Talismans, the Creativity and Progress. I'm not running Talisman of Conviction. I just don't, we're not really heavy on the red and white. Um, but, you know, running Grim Monolith and Vault, I mean, it's definitely needed because our commanders cost so much. A total of 13 mana to have both commanders out on essentially the both sides that we need. And we need Heliod cost seven, four for the main cost, three for the flip, and then six mana for the Locust God. So it's heavy investment, but I mean, it could come out really good. I'm, I'm excited. Um, we have Memory Jar, again, another staple in Wheelie Odd decks, but again, it's another again, it's another wheel, if if you think about it. So we're on, I think, eight wheels then. And it just it's free, right? Most of the time when we're going off. So it just gives us an extra set of fresh uh, sees extra seven cards and makes us seven more locusts. Um, one ring, just a given. Uh, I'm not sure about playing Manamo in this list. I feel like I should be. I don't have it currently in the list. I think I'm just running on Autowara, and I'm running a lot of the um, five color, um, any color lands. So like, we'll get that in just a minute though. Um, so one combo that's very specific to Locust God deck is Skull Clamp and Phyrexian Altar. A lot of the lists run Ashnod's Altar, so you can generate at least um, generic mana from it. But in our deck, we really want Colored Pips because we get the generic cost reduction from our other commander. So I slipped that in. So it's almost infinite. It's infinite card draw. And it just feels very strong. And you get almost infinite one ones. Um, so I kept that in the deck as well. I wanted to include that for sure in this list. Uh, moving on to enchantments. We got Blind Obedience again because it does combo with Hullbreaker. Uh, Greater Romancy again. We wanted that protection for our commander. Specifically Wheeliod. Because, you know, without that, you know, we're going to have to pay nine mana to cast again, which just feels really bad. Um, Impact Tremors is a card that I think feels correct. I feel like it's better than Breach in this list. Um, because if we're trying to go off and, you know, we're not keeping a lot of cards in the graveyard because we're just wheeling so much. Being able to um, get value off the one ones on someone else's turn where they're just taking damage and not having to worry about getting back to your turn just feels very strong. Um, just feels right, you know. Um, then we're running, obviously, Mystic Remora, Rhystic Study, Smothering Tithe. It's just an auto-include in this deck. And then Trouble and Pairs, more card advantage. All the card advantage engines, which is another reason I try to lean away from Chain of Vapor. Because we really don't want these to be removed when we're trying to go off. Because someone could just copy the chain. And I know that you can return your own artifacts and stuff, but I just feel like a lot of the times when I'm using Chain of Vapor, I'm trying to remove, remove something off my opponent's board that is problematic. So um, then land count, we're on 29. My Heliod list that I ran on the channel is usually around 25. So we upped the land count because we do want lots of mana. So let me know if anything sticks out here. I am on Urza Saga just to get that, you know, that search off in case I need more generic mana to accelerate my board state in the early game. I kind of thought about maybe swip it, swapping it out for a Manamo just to get more advantage off the one ring if it becomes necessary. Um, and I'm also running a Fiery Islet just because in case I need that one more damage uh, to kill the table to draw a card when I have Impact Tremors out as Locust God. It just kind of seems correct because uh, we want to be drawing lots of cards as well. Uh, Cavern also is very strong because both of our commanders are gods. It's just in, 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 what's the word? Incidental, incidentally good. Uh, and since we're not really like, we are scary. Our deck is definitely scary for sure because we can win at any time. But at the same time, 
we don't really, our life total doesn't really matter. So we can run like things like Tarnished Citadel. We're going to take three life off of, you know, just getting a, uh, one colored pip um, to pay for something. So not really hurting us. But yeah. Um, and then just some cards I'm considering. I really, really, really want to play Power Balance. It, I'm a huge fan of counterbalance in general because I'm I play I'm a me I tip my Mativit main, but I'm just worried about you know playing this card, flipping over a, a wheel effect, casting it, and then someone in response plays Bowmasters right because then you're just like well I'm gonna lose my board I'm gonna get doomed for another fifteen, just doesn't feel good so um, so it doesn't belong in this deck but I will eventually get this card on the channel where I hopefully can have both of these out at the same time that would be pretty insane. Um, so there's that Manamo I was talking about, I'm not sure. And then Breach, like, it's just, I don't know if it's needed, you know, like, again, it's a hot take. I don't think it belongs in this deck. Let me know if I'm wrong. But that's the deck. Um, I'm, I am like beyond excited. I will say doing this, um, Pride Month video has really just co created a cool design space. Cause like you get to pair things that don't really get the chance to see other color, part of the color pie, right? So, you know, being able to put Heliod and gaining access to red, your card quality just increases so much. Um, now I will say, I originally was gonna play Tivit, since I'm a Tivit main, and getting access to red, you get to play Magda as your, as your partner. And being able to just tutor up time seed felt very, very strong. But at the same time, it just felt like I was playing Blue Farm, like a worse version. And like a suboptimal, if you will. And I just was like, nah, I don't want to play that. Like, I want to play something like that's going to be really fun and really enjoyable. And I feel like Locust God has got a lot of cool tech to where he potentially could be a, a really great fringe CEDH commander. So he might be coming up on the channel, um, making an appearance on maybe a video up and coming. So, but yeah. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below on the final cuts. Um, I do have the deck list posted at the in the description below, so feel free to check it out. You can even comment on the Mox field itself, uh, but I'll be making sure I check both locations. Uh, but we want your help. Let me, I want your help. Let me know what you think uh, deserves. Let me know what I'm missing. Let me know when I, I could be, you know, at, uh, cutting, like what's a hard cut. It just, for me, cuts are like the hardest part because you're like, man, I want to play all of these cards. Like it, it's just so hard. Um, and again, maybe I'm not seeing something, like, I guess we could cut Gamble. I'm going to cut Gamble. It feels, it feels okay. We're going to move to considering. So we're already down to 105, but uh, that's going to do it for our sneak peek deck tech video for our Pride Month episode. Um, let me know in the comments below what you guys think um, of this type of style video. Did you enjoy it? Um, do you want us to do maybe more in the future for special event videos like the one coming out next Sunday? Um, but anyway, if you liked this video or like our content and want to see more, another way you can support us is hitting that like and subscribe button. It really does help our channel and we really appreciate your support. But again, that's going to do it for today's episode. I'm CJ. I'm part of Win Tuition and we'll catch you next time.